Hey BookTube, how's it going? I wanted to talk about the essential man thing. <clears throat> um, this was really good for the most part. Um, in here it has Savage Tales 1, which is where um, he came from, I guess. Astonishing Tales 12 through 13, Adventure into Fear 10 through 19, Man Thing 1 through 14, Giant Size Man Thing 1 through 2, and Monsters Unleashed 5, 8, and 9. Um, this says Volume 1. I don't know if there's a Volume 2. I would be interested in that. Um, <clears throat> but. Um, Man Thing's always been, this is Zoe, Zoe got this, um, a while back when we lived in North Hollywood, but, um, Man Thing, the first comic I ever bought, um, was a Marvel team up with Man Thing and Spider-Man. And so I always have a little place for Man Thing. And in the first, um, thing from Savage Tales... The artwork is done by Gray Morrow. It's like really like epic. Like very realistic stuff. Um all of that. Let's see here. Yeah, just like it it almost looks like photo tracing, but I don't think it is. It's just very very real looking compared to everything else that follows. Um let's see. So I guess Astonishing Tales is the actual name of the comic, but Kazar, um, Man Thing was into Kazar stories. And they did a good job um, tying in the stories um, from the first Man-Thing story in Savage Tales. But again, this artwork's really cool. This is uh, John Basima. And then... Um, let's see here. I'm just going to show you something. I just got to remember what it was. Um, Kazar, Kazar, Kazar. And then we get into, um, Jim Starlin, which is epic, and I'll show you that in a second. Oh, okay, let me see. It took a while. Well, see, here's the other thing. So, then, Adventure into Fear, I guess, was another Marvel comic. Um, fear being the name. Um, and I think a lot of that is like from like old, like comic era from, I guess, action comics, detective comics, and then going into the fifties with the horror comics, like Vault of Horror and Tales from the Crypt and stuff like that. But so... Some of this just gets really... Like, the point I wanted to make is that there's a look that Man-Thing has, and then there's people trying to fix it. In fact, one of the most interesting characters in the whole Man-Thing, at least this volume of it, is um, Jennifer... Right here. Down here. Um... She's just this chick that has, um, like, this weird connection with Man-Thing for some reason. But then they did the most ridiculous thing in the world, and I, I just... They took a great character and kind of killed the idea of it. Basically... Man Thing is in the Florida Everglades. Oh, that's what I wanted to show you. But I couldn't find it. Um, there's this awesome map in here. I like maps. 
too. Yeah, Zoe likes maps. Look at that. That's so cool. Um, and it wasn't until, yeah, this is the Jim Starlin stuff here. This, these panels right here are so cool. Like, man, things like getting close to this bad cop and the closer he gets to him, like his pupils, like the reflection of the cop isn't a cop anymore. It's little skulls. That's awesome. Um, but I think this is the first one where Val Merrick, Merrick, um, does the art. And Val Merrick nailed the look, the gait, um, the hands, like just everything. Um, and I don't know why, um, Merrick didn't stay on once, um, Man Thing got its own book. But, like, so here are some things I wanted to show. So this right here, what's this? Like, there's, like, a certain way Man Thing should walk and stand and everything like that. And this was it. And all the other ones, everyone tries to make them kind of look like... He's kind of like a superhero and stuff. But that that's Man-Thing. That's how Man-Thing lumbers around, for sure. Um, I, I know Man-Thing personally, and we've talked about this. But, I mean, you have, like, aliens landing in the swamp in Florida. You have um, this swamp being, like, a portal to, like, other dimensions. Um... And the only ongoing thread other than his origin story is that bit with Jen. And I kind of think they blew it with this big cosmic thing. Um, and then what, what page is marked here? Oh, in fact, um, in that same story, you have a barbarian who grew out of peanut butter. Yes, peanut butter. And on the back it even says, the peanut butter barbarian. Like they knew it was ridiculous. And the thing I don't understand is that there was a kid who just made himself a peanut butter sandwich and he was eating the peanut butter and then the peanut butter turned into some guy. So does that mean the kid was like eating some of the guy? It just makes more questions than answers, honestly. Um, let's see here. What was this? What did I pull this out for? Oh, this is Howard the Duck showing up in the swamp. So now Howard the Duck is with the Peanut Butter Barbarian and Man-Thing as they are like going to some floating castle. Um... It just got weird, and there's like a construction site that's like a through line on a lot of the stuff, and um, and here's the first man thing cover. Pretty nice. Um, there's like this construction site that's wanting to like like destroy the swamp or something, and then for any of you who are like Daredevil fans, I would love to know why this happened but you have these two panels right here like during this big crazy thing inside this comic daredevil is like good lord unless my radar sense is gone crazy we're passing through some kind of hole in space now we're swinging right back out it appears and that's it he's in and out um was that something going on in a Daredevil book at the same time? Because that's kind of cool that they added all that together, but that made absolutely no sense. Especially when the back of the book is like, oh yeah, you'll see Daredevil in here. Um, yeah, but just look at like how nuts this is. Like, what's going on? There's a flying car or something? I don't know. What's happening, you know? It's definitely very 70s. 
you have a lot of like biker gangs and um, hippie chicks, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, the Fantastic Four is in here briefly, but what really pissed me off about it is that. Yeah, here you go. You have the thing coming out right here going, oh yeah, I know, man, thing. I already toyed with them once or whatever. And Marvel 2 and 1 number 1. Why isn't that in this book? Why is that not in here? I would much rather have seen that than um, Man-Thing fighting the fool killer for two issues. Um, and then it all goes to hell when artist Mike Plug comes on board and turns Man-Thing into the Snuffleupagus. And it is horrendous. And it just gets worse and worse. Um, there are panels that look... And then, I don't know what they were doing here. Like, they were, like, kind of trying to change them or something. I don't know. It just looks awful. Um, but there's, like, some panels that look like they, they weren't even gonna finish them. Just really bad artwork. Like, just, it's, oh, I don't know. I could kind of go on and on about this. But the first bit was so good and fun that it makes it worth it, even though the rest of this art is, like, kind of... And, like, he does, like, weird characters kind of cool, like this weird old lady... She's terrifying looking. Yeah, let me see. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, and like the fun little dog. I'm running away! You know? Um, but in the same book, it's like there's no... There's almost no inks on it. Look at how crap that is. Look, look at Man-Thing right there. It looks like a dude with a snorkel. Got to show Zoe this, too. Yeah, ridiculous. <sighs> um, so, anyway. Um, going through it, um, it was fun. It was a good time well spent, I would say. Um, it makes me want to actually look at m more of the runs that happened after this, but also, um, look at, um, Val Merrick's work. <coughs> Every time I say his name, I uh, choke a little bit right there. Val Merrick. Um, check out more work by Merrick because that was like the stuff in here that shined the brightest. So, anyway, let me know down below what you think. Um, if you read Man Thing, um, what are some good runs to check out? Um, and, yeah, we'll talk to you soon.